What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding the Cutlass. In this episode, we got a ton of maintenance to do, so let's get to it. So as I mentioned in the intro there, we have a ton of maintenance we gotta get done on the Cutlass today. Uh, we might not get to all of it, but as you see in the first video, we uh, went down a list of things that I needed to get done, uh, and that's gonna be the start of it today. So I got my list right here, uh, we got things like oil change, I got a new water neck, uh, we're going to work on some engine electrical. I saw one down in the comments from the last video saying get that electrical bay or that engine bay uh, cleaned up from all that electrical mess. Um, so I also got to seal the windshield. We're going to work on that transmission fluid leak and then we're also going to take a look at that belt squealing. So let's see what we get through today and uh, yeah, let's get to it. So the first thing I want to work on is actually fixing this belt squeal. So you can see here, this belt's kind of loose. Uh, we got two bolts here. This bottom one loosens up the uh, bottom part of the holder for the alternator, and this one is the actual adjustment. So I want to loosen up both bolts and then uh, bring this uh, bolt upwards by applying some pressure, either by a long screwdriver or something of the sort. But just kind of got to add a little more tension. This is way too much play which is causing it, the belt to squeak. The belt's still in really good shape though, so. All right, check that out. We have a lot more tension on that. I actually moved it quite a bit. I'll go ahead and get on in here and show you what I mean. So you can see where it was and now where it's at. So uh, we gained a lot there. So we'll go ahead. So the next thing we wanna go ahead and work on is the engine oil. So we haven't changed the oil yet this year and uh, Pretty much needs to be done. We like to do it at least once a year uh, when it comes out of storage. So let's go ahead and go get the oil and let's get this oil changed. There we go, oil change is now complete. As you guys might have saw, I did have a couple issues with that oil filter. It was giving me a really, really big hassle. I ended up having to shove a screwdriver into the side of it and actually taking it off that way. Uh, but we ended up getting it off, no issue. Ended up putting everything back together. We used a Fram oil filter, Valvoline 10W30. I know you guys might have your own opinions on engine oil or filters. So let me know what you guys use in the comments there, and uh, so that way I have good recommendations for the next time that I change the oil on this Cutlass. But uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next thing, which I think we're gonna try to tackle that water neck. So let's get to it. All right, guys, so this is the Four Season water neck. 
Um, it's a little different than the one I have now. So the one I have now is that chrome piece that, I don't know, supposed to dress up the engine bay, I guess, a little bit. But I absolutely hate it. So I went ahead and purchased this one, which is an all aluminum construction. Hopefully it's a little more rigid, seals a little better. It does have this water neck that sticks out here. So a teeny bit different. I may have to cut down my hose that I have, because I already have like this little uh, bend in the hose. So I might have to cut that down a little bit to make it fit. But nonetheless, we need to replace this. Uh, it also came with the gasket sitting in there. So we'll go ahead and uh, take the old one off the engine and put this one on. All right, new water neck is now installed. And next we'll go ahead and do the transmission line where it was leaking. So I'll go ahead and show you where it was leaking again, if you didn't catch it from the last uh, episode, and we'll go ahead and uh, start fixing that. So as I just showed there, it seems we're pouring out transmission fluid from the top transmission line. So what we're going to do is take off the transmission line. We're going to throw some Teflon tape around there. And then also check the actual fitting to make sure everything's okay with it. And then we'll try to tighten it back down. Maybe that will give us a little bit stronger uh, bite and uh, let us thread it in a little bit more. So let's go ahead and start doing that and see if that fixes it. All right, we went ahead and tightened that up through the Teflon tape on there. So let's go ahead and start the car and see if it leaks anymore. Hopefully it does not. All right, there we go. Now we got that leak is all taken care of up front with the transmission. What we're gonna do now is focus on the windshield. Remember what I'm saying is that the uh, front windshield here was leaking right around where the rear view mirror is. Now I got some just regular black silicone that I got from the local hardware store. I'm just gonna lay that on there. This is not a great windshield. I don't have any of the stuff you're supposed to use for putting like windshields in, so it's just gonna have to do. Uh, the silicone based stuff should just be just fine to uh, lay in there and hopefully not let it leak anymore. If it leaks some more, we will have to do something else, but. What we're gonna do right now is uh, clean this out a little bit because uh, some of the sealant is kind of uh, already coming out. As you can see, I have a nice big strip right where the rear view mirror is. And I'm just gonna kind of peel some of this away and we'll lay down a new little bead uh, right in there. Hopefully that takes care of it. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, clean this up. We'll get the silicone out and uh, seal that up. All right, so that went in and got all sealed up nice. Uh, I got a couple spots right here on the windshield that I got to just clean up after uh, it's all dry. But we're just gonna let it sit now, let it harden up, and then hopefully after that's all done, uh, I'll hit it with a hose, see if it leaks anymore. Hopefully it doesn't. 
But now we're going to go ahead and move on to the engine bay where we're going to work on the wiring. So let's head that way. All right, so the next thing I want to work on is the wiring. As one of the commenters uh, in my last video mentioned, the wiring is just a mess. And I totally agree with him. So everything starting here from the battery, going back, uh, from the distribution there to inside the car, it just needs to be cleaned up quite a bit. So I did order some things that will help with the cleanup. And uh, it, some of it was from last year when I did my EFI, uh, my sniper EFI, and it just kind of like fell to the wayside. So I ordered this stuff. Hopefully I can get everything cleaned up a lot better than what it is currently. So let's go ahead and get that product and I'll show you what I'm going to be working with. So these are the two things I ordered here. It's, um, uh, I got four rolls of wire loom, uh, fireproof tape, and then also a uh, half inch split cable uh, sleeve. And this is similar to like what OEM stuff comes out with nowadays. So it's it splits, it then covers over top of the wire there. And what I can do is come back through with the tape here and wrap everything up. Uh, hopefully this is big enough for most wires here and then hopefully I have enough tape to do everything I need to do here. So I'm just gonna kind of start in at it and see how far I get. But uh, hopefully it's better than what it will be now. All right, well, I'm not 100% done, but it's gonna be good for this episode here. I got the loom all the way up to the firewall on this right side. It's looking great. And then I also did the uh, loom going for the alternator and the oil pressure and uh, coolant temperature sensor all the way through here. I did clean up a little bit of stuff in the back back here, but that's going to be for another day when I don't have to drive the car that often because it's going to be a lot of uh, cutting and snipping and finding out where wires go. So uh, for now, we're just going to leave it like that since it's working. But the uh, wire cleanup actually worked out really, really, really good. So, so that's going to go ahead and be a wrap for today. Uh, if you really like this video, make sure to click like on it and also subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Comment down below if you want to see something uh, else for the next episode. Like I said, I did the wiring on this episode just because someone uh, commented that it was a mess. So if you want to see something happen in the next episode, just leave a comment. But uh, until next time, make sure to uh, turn on the post notifications so that way you can see my next episode. And I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching.